this is a conversation that I hear a lot, especially uh, from women entrepreneurs. There are there's just a difference between a man's experience, a woman's experience, and we'll talk about that um, a little bit. But tell me how you balance your personal and professional life, right? There's there's the role of mother. There's the role of wife. There's the role of leader in your business. How do you balance it all to sustain your ease and peace of mind? <clears throat> so that's a great question. And if I can be 100% transparent, I'm not sure I have it 100% right. So what I try my best to do is to keep my business hours, my business hours. And once I'm out, I'm out. So when I get out of the office, I'm on mommy duty. So I'm doing the, the mommy stuff. So I try to minimize evening meetings. I try to minimize any client calls. Um, so you'll, a lot of times you'll see me on some of our group stuff that I have in the evenings. I'm always at a, like an event with my, like my son. So I will take him to practice. So that's where I'm at. But if we're home, I'm trying not to do anything that's interrupting their time. Um, and for the most part, I think I'm still a work in progress, but communication helps with that saying, okay, yes, this evening I do have a client call. It's going to be in the evening. So I'm going to share dinner out, but I'm not going to be able to eat dinner with you guys. I think mm -hmm. it's kind of just like setting that expectation, but yeah, it's very, um, it's difficult. And I don't know, I don't know if there's a way to balance it all. You probably just have to prioritize each one as the times need, like we're getting into tax season. So I'm not gonna be able to do that. Like tax season, I do work a lot more hours because there's deadlines. Um, so I think I'm definitely still working that out. Um, I think sticking to calendars, like if something's not on my calendar, it's probably not getting done. So I do try to put everything on my calendar and yeah, so. I'm probably that's probably not my a that's probably not my a section of my life <laughs> you know that you know some things um when you're an entrepreneur and i mean as a woman i really feel this as a woman i don't think that men unless they're like single parents or primary mm -hmm. caregivers that sort of thing I don't think they face the same level of scrutiny I don't think so. um, as we do when it comes to the amount of time they spend in their business versus with their children. I mean, men get applauded for just taking their children to school. Like, oh, you're such a good father, yeah. right? And then if you're a mom that doesn't sit down and eat dinner with your children yeah. or you are going on business trips or business meetings, you're building your business, then you are, you know, under a microscope and being yeah. judged about, you know, your uh, status as a mom or a wife, you know, and if someone leaves, it's your fault, right? So um, tell me what you think. Are the differences between men and women in business and do, do you lean <laughs> more towards the masculine or feminine side of things so that is that's funny because that masculine feminine um conversation has come up in my life since i started entrepreneurship like it's probably always been there but because of the coaching that i've received that wasn't there before um, I definitely lean towards the masculine side. I do actively try to be in my feminine more, but because I am the owner of the business, because I'm the one that has to make decisions, I think I'm in the masculine a little bit more. Some of the differences I think are what we just discussed. Um, I don't think I don't think men would have to decide for too long if there was a like an opportunity, it's out of town. I think they would probably, you know, book the ticket and be like, yeah, I can get there and then go home and be like, okay, so I'm going out of town this week because this and this and this is happening. Whereas the same opportunity would be presented to a woman who has a wife and children and she'd be like, let me get back to you on the opportunity because I need to see if everything can be lined out before I can book the ticket. So I think a lot of the conversations and the decisions, I think it happens a lot quicker um, for men in a lot of cases, I'm not saying everybody, but I think a lot of, um, decisions and opportunities can be like, you can take advantage of them a lot quicker 
um, in the men scenario. I think the women actually consider all of the other aspects um, before. So why do you think that, okay, so why do you, would you say that you lean more towards the masculine side? I mean, as women, we're all in the position of decision, <clears throat> right? Like, which is already considered a masculine trait. Mm -hmm. in so I can understand that aspect. But why you specifically, do you, do you do what you just described a man to do? Like if an opportunity comes and you're like, oh yeah, do you just book the trip and then come home like I'm going? Or do you handle it? <laughs> yes. Um, so that's why. So that's why. <laughs> so that I have done that, and so that's what I mean that I operate. I tend to operate in the masculine because a lot of aspects in my life, I'm like, I just feel like I'm not typical. Like I don't operate the way typical women do. So opportunities have come up. I have been like, yes, I'm going to do that. And then I would take the time to go home and be like, oh, this opportunity came up, but I probably don't be like, well, I already accepted because like, so I'm still trying to maneuver that I already said yes here. So we just need to work on what that looks like here. And I've done that um, a few times. So that's why I say that I do operate in the masculine. And it wasn't like, it was just me. It was just my personality. I didn't even realize that it was a masculine feminine thing until I started being having around, like hearing, having those conversations. It was just me. I was like, well, I thought it through in my head. It was an opportunity. I had to give an answer. So I gave an answer. <laughs> like, um, so that's, that's kind of how I've been. And I think a lot of it comes from my father passed away when I was really young. And so my mom mm -hmm. raised us. So I was raised by a single mom and, you know, I don't like cliches, but a lot of that is true. Like we were taught how to be independent, how to do things. Like we all know how to cook. Like I knew, I learned how to cook when I was like seven or eight, my siblings, we all know how to cook, but I meet adults now. And some adults I know don't know how to cook. And I'm just like, I don't understand how, how are you going to survive if somebody's not cooking for you? Like this, it, to me, it's, and then I realized that I'm operating in masculine, but I'm like, I thought I was just living. <laughs> yeah, me too. I struggle with that too. And, you know, I was like, I'm just, I'm androgynous with my, with my style um, yeah. of business. I operate in the masculine and the feminine, and it is based on what society has deemed masculine mm. and feminine. Um, because if I take the old queen code, right, then we, both of us are absolutely operating in the feminine yeah all right we're gonna come back and talk some more um with atia of the savvy accountants <laughs> 